Welcome to CSE 103 to exercise 6C. This is a new exercise for fall 2020. We're going to do a Halloween themed vector exercise and we're going to put some bats in there and then we'll throw some other things in there. And it'll be a little different than the one we did in the past in spring 2020 where we just did one bat and a bird. So we're going to do a couple new things in here. So I think you'll enjoy this. What you're going to do first is go to your bookmarks. If you go to your bookmarks, you could use the same link that we use for some of the raster exercises that we use for Photopea. You could just click on one of these and we'll take a bat right out of here. You could certainly take things from the web somewhere else, but I'm going to go in here and find the bat that I've used in the past. So I'm going to click on it so I see the isolated version of the bat and I'll just keep it open right now. And Or you could just do this. You could just do copy image. Now I know last time we did copy image address. We don't have to do that. We're just going to copy image. So I'm right clicking copy image and I'm going to go here. Now you should have Gravit set up already. I'm going to close this up because I'm going to make a new one. And what you can do is use paper size and you can choose a letter format landscape. We'll make it just kind of an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper on its side. So it'll be letter landscape and you could just choose that and it'll be in inches. So if you zoom out, there's your page. Now, when we start doing things, you can make these things on the side hide if you want. So if they're in your way and you don't have a lot of room to work, you could hide those, but we'll do that as we start working. Let me hide my downloads at the bottom here to give me a little, little more room at the bottom. So what I can do is just remember, I did copy image and I'm just gonna go back to grab it and I'm gonna paste my image. Now, if you just go to edit paste, it'll give you some error. It won't let you just paste, you should use the shortcut. So on a Mac, you would use Command V. On Windows, do Control V. Just do that and you'll be fine. So just click here and, I'm, and do Control V or Command V. And it'll paste it right on your page. It should fill up your eight and a half by 11. And there's your bat. And there's the original image. It has a little icon because this is a bitmap image. It's a graphic, it's a photograph, a bat on a white background. And what you could do first thing is go to your opacity and turn it down because we're just going to use this to trace. So we don't need to see the full detail of the bat. Turn it down to somewhere like 50%. If you need to go more, that's fine. But 50% should be good somewhere around there and make sure <laughs> Make sure you leave go that it doesn't go down. So, and then click off it. And then what you can also do is lock this. If you hover over image and go here, you can lock it. And that means you won't accidentally grab it because we're just gonna trace over it. And before you do anything else, you should probably save it. So I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna go down here in the bottom and call it 6C and just call it bat. And I guess we could call it bat witch because we could throw a witch in there. We might throw something else in there, but I'll call it bat witch. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to put an extension because it's just through Gravit and it's in the cloud. So you don't have to do anything else. So 6C bat witch, that's fine. And that way it's saved. And then also wait for it to, to sync. And also let me remind you, cause we use this in another class, before you ever share it, make sure that you always save it before you share it. Make sure you save it and make sure it's done syncing and you don't see an asterisk there anymore. Make sure you do not see an asterisk. Then you could share it, that means it's saved. Now, you don't wanna share it yet, we haven't done anything. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna trace this bat using vector tools, we're gonna to use a pen tool and we're gonna do it manually and we're gonna make all straight line segments and then we're gonna convert them to curves and use little handles like we were doing on some of the other exercises. So now that I have this over here, I see there's an image. Now, when I start using this, it's gonna put a new path in my layer palette and I'll show you that, but, but for now we can hide this. So we have a little more room. So I'm gonna to go to view and just turn off. There's a check mark next to show layers, turn that off. And then I have a little more room here. I could zoom in a little bit and I'll just kind of scroll over a little bit. So I have the whole bat in here. And again, we're just gonna make straight line segments. We're not gonna try to make curves as we draw. And we're gonna use this tool, the pen tool. And we're just gonna click here and you're gonna see this pen thing. And we're just gonna click almost like the polygonal lasso in Photopea where you just click and then you move and you click. So wherever you wanna start, I'm gonna start here in the upper corner. I'm not gonna go over every little contour. I'm just gonna click where there's a change of direction. So I'm just gonna click once, click again, click. There's a little change of direction here. I'm not gonna go around the ears. I'm just gonna click and make pointy ears right now, just like a, a little like Batman mask or something. I'll click here, I'll click down, and click again. Again, just all straight line segments. Click here, click there. And don't worry if it's not following the bat. You don't have to click, 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 click all over the place. Just click where there's a change of direction. I'm not gonna make his feet, so I'm just gonna click. 
I'm not going to worry about this little kind of in and out pattern. I'm just going to click. It'll be kind of more of an iconic type bat. And I'll click here, and I'll click here. And then when you're done, this is the most important part, you just want to click on where you started. So just click right there where it's getting kind of greenish. Just click. Then you will have a filled shape, a filled vector shape. If I went over here to view show layers panel, I'll have a path. That's a path right there. And I guess I could let this out right now. So I have a path right now. And remember, these are all straight line segments and they have anchor points that are connecting them. Now, for now, what we want to do is we want to use our sub select tool. That's the one that edits anchor point. It selects them, it can delete them, it could change the type of point that they are. So what we're going to do is use these things. And this makes life real easy to change these because they're straight line segments, which they all are right now, even though this is not saying straight. It really is. These are all straight line segments. But we're actually going to be using these, these disconnected ones, because then we could pull handles in different directions and make these like scallop type shapes. Now, one more thing I want to do, I can't see the bat right now. You might be thinking, well, I can't see the bat. And that's because this shape right now has a fill. And if you go here, you could remove the fill. And here we have our fill. Here we have our border. Now, you want to keep the border on so you could see it going around. It's just a one point black border. But if you want to take away the fill, just go to the trash can. And now you'll still see your path, but you won't have anything filling it so you could see the bat. And what we're going to do is just go to each anchor point. I'm going to go here and just kind of move around clockwise. And I'm going to convert it to disconnected. I'll just make it disconnected and you'll see these little handles coming out. I'll zoom in a little bit and move over so you could see them. I might be zoomed in too much. It seems to zoom a lot. You might be able to reset these settings. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend this down a little and bend this up a little bit. It'll, it'll make more of a difference down here, but I'm just kind of moving these. But what you can do here, you can, even if you want to make it more of an iconic bat, you could even kind of bend them in and make it more scalloped. But whatever you want to do, if you want to follow it as close as you can, you could, you could do that. You could even go over here. If I clicked here and clicked on disconnected, now what's weird is you don't see a handle there, but if you go right on the line, you can get a handle. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you can make one go down and then make this one go up. And you could kind of make a little like S shape there. So you could do that too. Or you could just follow the way it is, but just some different options that you could do there. So going around here, I'm not going to do anything here. I'm going to go here and make this disconnected. And I could see there's little handles there. So I'm going to make his, his ears kind of like, uh, like little horns a little bit. And then I'll skip over his head. I'll keep his head on a straight line. If you'd want to actually just kind of grab on the line and move up, look what it does. It actually converts it and moves it up a little bit. It takes a straight line segment and moves it up. So if I grab right on the middle of that line and move up, it'll kind of arch it for me or arc it for me. And then I'll go here and I'll make it disconnected. And I'll just pull out a handle here and I'll make the other handle go in kind of like little horns there. I know that's not really anatomically correct of a bat. And this I could leave the way it is. Now, this one I'm gonna make disconnected so it gets little handles. Because you remember on the other side, I kind of went in and then the other one kind of goes up. Now you don't have to do that, you could just follow it. And the same thing, I'll go here and I'll make it disconnected. Now. When you do that, it won't show a handle right away. You have to kind of grab right here. And there's a handle coming up, and then I could grab this handle going down. Now, if the, again, if that's confusing, then just leave it go and just let it go straight. And then I'll just keep moving along. I'm just scrolling here. And I should have a... Now, I don't see a handle here. If you ever don't see a handle and it says disconnected, that there has to be one there. So just kind of grab down, and there it is. Now there's a handle. Now whether you want it going up or you could kind of go down and make it a little scallopy looking, that's fine. You could, you know, it's a cartoon bat, so you, you could do whatever you want. And over here, what I'm going to do is do disconnected and then bend this handle down a little bit. And then there's a handle there. That little blue thing is a little handle. I'll bend it down. And if you bend it enough, if you pull it out, you see if you make it, if you pull it out, it, it makes the curve longer. This controls the curve. You know, a short curve, the handle's kind of in close to it. If there's no handle at all, it goes back into the point. But if you pull it out, you kind of control that. So the reason I'm saying that is you probably don't have to do anything here. 
you could probably just keep moving on and I'll zoom out a little bit now and see the bat as a whole what's going on and because that looks pretty good I probably don't have to mess with it I could probably go here and click on this thing and then use this to kind of bend in and and you could bend it in and then stretch it out you could see you could follow the contour a little bit as much as you want by pulling on this thing it goes like around like a clock hand and plus it also pulls out like you're pulling out an antenna from an old radio or something you probably don't remember a radio with an antenna <laughs> you probably never grew up with one but anyway here's a handle and i'll just bend that in so it looks scallop shape and again if I have a scallop here, I don't have to do anything here. I mean, if you did, it's okay. If you clicked here, it's just that it doesn't always show the handle right here, and then you gotta kinda bend it in. You gotta grab on the line and bend it in. So it's a little tricky at times. So what I'm saying is if you already have this in the right place, then skip over it and go up here. And if you need to move your whole screen, hold down your space bar and get this little hand thing, and that way you could kinda scroll your, your page without having to kind of scroll with your mouse or anything. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to use disconnected and bring that up. And then if you have one there, bring that down. And if you want this to kind of go in, there might be one here already. So I might hover right over this and just pull that in. And I might go over here. I already have one there. So that looks pretty good. I mean, as far as I went from my bat, I'll zoom out even a little more. So that looks pretty good. Now what I'll do is I'll fill it now. And you could go around and tweak it as much as you want. I'm going to go fill it. That means I'm going to add a fill. So I'll go over here to fills. There's no fill because I took it away. And I'm going to add one. And it made it black right away. So that's perfect. And I don't need a border. So I could use the trash can on this border thing over here. So I'll just hit the trash can there on the border. So I don't need a border. And then when you're done with the bat, if you're done editing it, you can go back to the regular pointer. And it selects the whole bat. And that's not a bad looking bat. Although I have this one scalloped and that one's rounded. I could always go back and go into my sub select. And if I wanted that scalloped, I could just pull that down. That's all I have to do. That's fine. And I'll go back to my regular pointer and I could keep my bat like that. Now I don't need the image of the bat anymore. I could delete that or I could just turn off the visibility. I could go under here and I could just turn off the eyeball. Just click on that eyeball and that's gone. And what I'm going to do is just make a couple bats. So I could scale this by grabbing on here. And at this point, you might want to do a save. Go over to the little save icon and save it. It does auto save, but it's a good idea to save it as much as you can as well. So I'm going to make a couple bats. I'm going to hold down my option key, or you could just do this. This might be easier. If you click on this and you just go edit, duplicate, and it's also command D on Mac or control D on Windows. Now when you duplicate it, it makes a copy right on top of it. So you don't even know it's there, but it, but it is there. So if you move it, you'll see that you have another copy or bat. And that way I can kind of make a smaller one. I'll put this here. Maybe I'll rotate it with this thing. I'll just make it look like they're going off in the distance. I'll move this a little further. I'll rotate this one and make like, you know, three or four bats, something like that. And again, I'll do Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows. And it made a copy and it's right on top. So I'll go over here and I'll make it smaller. And maybe this one I'll rotate the other direction and you can do as many bats as you want. You put little tiny ones in the distance, Command D. And that one actually made it so it was actually rotating. It did more of what I just did the last time. And I'll do that, I'll rotate it. So you can do as many bats as you want. Now it's just on a white background so it looks kind of plain right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a background with a gradient so it kind of looks like a sky. So make sure you save it. But what I'm gonna do is just draw a rectangle. So I'll go here and I'll draw a rectangle and I'll start in the upper left corner of the page and I'll drag all the way across so it fills up the whole page. And there it is, and it's this big gray thing. Now it's covering over everything right now. So I'm gonna to have to move my rectangle down here. But before I do anything, what I'm gonna do is I'll fill it with a gradient. You just click right in the circle here of the color fill, not the eyedropper. You don't wanna use the eyedropper. You wanna click right here and click and then change this to linear gradient because it's gonna be a sky. Now you could use a radial, that might look okay. And now it's going white to black. Now we want dark on the top, like a purple color and kind of an orange on the bottom, like a, like a sunset looking kind of thing. So what you can do before you do anything else is just rotate it and then rotate it again so that the dark is on the top, the light's on the bottom. Now it's still black to white, but if you go to the black part and click right on this white thing, not next to it, not on either side, right on this white thing here, where the black color is, if you click right on that selector, 
just go down here and I'll make it purple. And if you want it darker purple, then go in here, go in this little color picker area and make it darker purple. And then on this end, I'm gonna click right on this white selector and I'll choose like an orange color. And now we have this sunset looking thing. And if you wanted it more purple, you could kind of drag this purple slider over so it creates more purple. So it's a little darker. You could also add more colors in the sky. If you want a little red in the sky or something like that, you could, you could click right here and add a red or something. Now that might be too bright, and it actually is, unless you put a kind of a darker red. You could do that if you don't like it. If you grab this and just drag it down, hold down and drag down, it'll go away. So I still have an orange and purple gradient. I just move my purple slider over. So that's my sky. Unfortunately, it's in front of my bats. But to move it down below my bats, I could grab this rectangle layer. And if you even want to double click on it, right on the name and call it sky, you could do that. That way you'll know it's your sky. And then drag sky down. It has to go, I guess, right in front of the image because it won't go below image. I don't believe. I guess I'll just put it under the pass. Now make sure it, it's not like on top some, of something like that. You don't get that heat, that red color. You want to just be on a line in between. So I'll leave go there so that sky is behind all those things. And if it looks like that, then you did the right thing. And then a couple more things I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a moon. The moon is really easy to do. I'm just going to make a circle. So I'll go here and make an ellipse. They call it an ellipse. And I'm just going to draw a circle. And I'm going to zoom into it a little bit. Now, it used the same color I used for the rectangle. That's fine. I'm going to go down here and go in my little color thing and make it white. Now, be careful. If you try to make it white, it's going to mess with the gradient. So I'm just going to make it a solid color fill. So change it to color fill. And now it's orange right now. Actually, orange is not bad. I was going to make it white, but orange looks pretty cool. It's going to be a moon. I guess the moon can be orange. I'll leave it orange. I'll see how it looks. So I'm going to highlight this. And what you could do is Command D, or you can actually hold down your Alt key or your Option key. If you're on Windows, hold your Alt key. If you're on Mac, hold your Option key. And just move it over. Drag it over and leave go of your mouse first and keep your Option key or your Alt key held down so that you have two circles like that. So with both of these selected, I'm going to use my compound paths. And just like we did with the apple, I'm going to choose subtract. And now I have an orange moon here. And I could change the color if I want. And it's still a compound path, so you can go and use this squiggle and just make it into a regular path, which is fine. And if you want to change the color, you could go down here and make it yellow. Maybe yellow moon will look okay. You can make it bigger. You could make it more orangey, lighter, anything you want to do. So there's our moon. So let me just zoom out and see what we have here. So we have a moon. What I'm going to do for the last part of this, and we're going to take a break here, I'm going to show you a tool that actually will trace some graphics. So if this is kind of boring the way it is, we're going to put a witch in here and we're going to throw some zombies or anything else you'd want to put in. Corn stalks, haunted house, anything you want to throw in. But we're going to add a couple more things in here. Now, our layer palette is getting a little full here with all these paths. One thing you can do you can put all these paths into a layer folder. If you wanted to put all your bats into one layer folder and call it bats or something, you could do that. So if you if you want to do that, I could just highlight all my bats. Now you don't have to do this, but there's all my bats and you can see the four, four paths are the bats. And actually what I'll do is I'll name this moon, double click there, I'll call that moon so I know where the moon is. And then these four paths here, I'm gonna make a layer folder. So if you create new layer, it's actually a layer group. So if I click on that, and I'll call that bats. Then I can click on path, this top path, and then hold my shift key and click on the last one so that all these paths are selected. And I'm just gonna drag it right on top of the bat layer so it's all red. So when you see it, it's kind of that red color and leave go. And then all my bats are in there. So that just organizes this a little bit more. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a break here, make sure I save it, save what I have, we're going to take a break and then on part two of the video, I'm going to come back and just show you how to use an automated tool in Gravit to trace some artwork and just put them in there and convert it to vector so that it's still vector artwork even though you're borrowing it from somewhere else. So we're going to do that in part two. So make sure you save. You don't have to share it yet.